also the elite children, yeah, they learn science and math, but they learn it in the context of how to govern people mm -hmm. and not just be learning how to do it. They learn why can't we be prideful about something? Yeah, it's always, you that's know, always been the why case. Why can't too. we be, you know, why is it that when we start talking about our pride, you know, a, a lot of white folks are like, <laughs> Yeah, what about white mad? pride? <laughs> it's like they're mad, like, it's, you know, it's, it's, like, it's like, okay, what about white pride? Like, okay, be, so because y'all don't want to talk about white pride or y'all don't feel need to, so when we feel the need to encourage it and speak on it because of the representation or the misrepresentation of us, and we need to make sure our, our, our children come behind us know that they have a reason to be proud for so many reasons, you know, social and sociological and psychologically and, and, just, and just generally anyway, for, for not being proud, like, come on, like, and, but what's, we're not saying for y'all not to be proud. And they're like, yes, be proud, black people, and heck, fuck with everybody else. No, we're just saying, yo, be proud. No, 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 don't be proud. So for, by you saying, by you mad, that means you're mad for black people to be proud. <laughs> right. So that's about it for me. <laughs> no, the whole deal is that whiteness is property as a concept. Mm -hmm. If you really think about what that really means, is that concepts like being proud or having money in a capitalistic context is a white proprietary privilege. Mm -hmm. Like, that's who gets to do that, right, right. <laughs> you know. So you talking about, right. man, and yeah. so it ain't we even like pride. it ain't that they don't want to speak about pride, and so we fill in that void. It's that this paradigm is based on white pride in the first place. Mm -hmm. We live white pride every day in our natural everyday. All these structures are built on white pride right. because it's built right. on um, white supremacy. Right. That's the highest mark of pride going crazy is su white supremacy as a philosophy is kind of like kind of predicated on having an excess amount of pride it's like nationalism excess is called jingoism mm -hmm. it's like a jingoistic approach to having racial pride like extra on steroids that's mm -hmm. what white supremacy is and then next there'll be another movement you know it's like, like, like they're like fads well you know people don't realize that there's a, such an act there's an actual science called statecraft mm -hmm. It's just that the marginalized or average so-called populations or part of the population never get to be exposed to that because it's not for anybody but the elite mm -hmm. in terms of how governance works. Mm -hmm. So the elite children, yeah, they learn science and math, but they learn it in the context of how to govern people mm -hmm. and not just be learning how to do it. They learn that in terms of strategy and military mm -hmm. warcraft in terms of how to control populations that they are uh, over, you mm -hmm. know, the Lord Surf model. Mm -hmm. And so this, that, that element that's that strategic people don't realize <clears throat> that people have studied human behavior and quantified it in such a way that where they can almost predict so they can have it the way they can predict outcomes given what stimuli they place in in certain areas what that type of areas comprised of in terms of people even down to their personality types and able to inject things into that environment that you know play out over time in ways that they can predict other trends being set like this is quantified stuff the Rand Corporation Brookings Institution Heritage Foundation all of these think tanks and different networks transnational advocacy networks and stuff like that they specialize in selling the value system of what end up distilling as policies so they people like James Tooley the Bro Foundation the Koch brothers Bill and Melinda Gates Clinton Initiative all these different players, you got spokespeople with blogs and newspapers and websites and you got actual mobile people going and speaking in front of people doing TED Talk. These are transporting these ideas. These ideas are mobile, but they're all based on similar value systems in their network that control millions and millions of dollars to instantiate that value system through programs that are like solutions. If you hear business people talk, they always talk about problem solution. My product is a solution. Like products are solutions. That's how they see solutions. So when they say solutions, you and I with a social science kind of framework we thinking of a solution that's something that's really like a a, a, a value solution to help mankind like a benefit like a, a real solution to a social problem mm -hmm. when they say solution they talking about a monetized innovation that you can consume versus another one that you can consume mm -hmm. that's better mm -hmm. <laughs> that's what they mean by solution right and so that's as a result of a of society that has um, that um, people have thought out the behavior and the quantity in terms of how it moves in order to be even even to offer a kind of style of thinking that makes people accept this problem solution scenario that is clearly monetized but they keep accepting that as a real life problem solution like not knowing that they part of a game like three car molly that's always taking their money and giving them different solutions every other month for some new problem that they created and that's what it is you already know um men talk we bring it to you inside my car uh <laughs> Get your mind right. Change your paradigm. Brothers, you two sisters and young men, 
We come to talk to you soon. Once again, the B-Lane Network Men Talk, we bring it to you. My brother Garfield, Urban Wall Street. Information is physical. You already know. Peace.